Hi friends, I'm Katie. And I'm Lauren. And welcome to Okay, But Did You Know? A podcast where we talk about the TV and media that we love with a friend who's never seen it before. Today we're recapping and chatting about Bob's Burgers Season 3, Episode 15, OT, The Outside Toilet, and Episode 16, Topsy. We always start with a synopsis, so here's the synopsis for Season 3, Episode 15, OT, The Outside Toilet. Gene is having a baby. His class is getting flower babies, and Gene keeps dropping his babies. He takes a long trek home from school and discovers a toilet in the woods. A strange man asks Gene if he's seen the toilet, and Gene keeps it his secret. Bob borrows a suit from Mort to contest a parking ticket, and the suit helps him out of paying the ticket. He continues to wear a dead man's suit, and people treat him better. The strange man from the woods turns out to be a thief, and Gene will do anything to protect his toilet baby. Bob is confronted by the late suit owner's son and has to give up the suit. Gene says a sad goodbye to the toilet, but learned a wonderful lesson. A, a lesson is one way to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <sighs> Once again, an interesting synopsis, but yeah. this is the show. Like, mm-hmm. It's not that my synopsis are weird. It's what we're watching is interesting. Yeah, that's fair. So we always start off with the puns. What did you get for the vacant storefront? Okay. Um, so we got uh, Earth, Wind, and Tires. <laughs> the play on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Do and for our pest control it? truck. <laughs> uh, we have Adios Mice Chachos, which I, I I give them kudos when like they're like actually puns and actually clever. Yeah. Right? Like not not that like, you know, like what re- like, you know, Ready Set Dead isn't funny, but like mm-hmm. Something like this that's supposed to be for adios muchachos and with a mouse running away from, like, the sign is Mm -hmm. funny. I like when they're actually funny. And how many, sorry, yeah, it is great when they're actually funny. And then you have terrible ones that were like, that's not, why did we choose this? Yeah. What did you get for the burger of the day? Um, I only got one burger this time around. Mm -hmm. I think it was just the one burger. It was. Uh, And I got sharp cheddar dressed man burger. Comes with sharp cheddar, and then I commented, sounds delicious, but is a terrible pun. It's, yeah, ZZ Top. Please, I, you should know who ZZ Top is. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sharp Dress Man. I've heard that song a million times in my childhood. All right, so did you pick up on who our guest stars are? Um, did I? I Okay, so the guy that played the, the, the creepy guy with the toilet. Mm-hmm. Max Flush. I know his voice. I know his face. I do not know his name. Where do you know him from? Um, he was on Scrubs and he was on The Middle. That's, I believe those are the mm-hmm. two shows that come to mind. Yes. He is the janitor in Scrubs and the dad in The Middle. That is Neil Flynn. Gotcha. I, I adore him. I have I remember watching Scrubs growing up as we probably shouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. And I, I loved his character. He is so funny. Yeah. Um, John Hamm is the toilet. Mm-hmm. And on that, uh, so John Hamm is the toilet, and early on, Louise, like, whenever Bob walks in in the suit, mm-hmm. she says Don Draper's kind of fat this season. Yeah. Don Draper is a character that John Hamm plays mm-hmm. on Mad Men. So I love that they did that. I thought yeah. that was funny. Um, it's pretty much obvious that this is a parody of the um, uh, E.T. Yes. So E.T. the extra because I never realized that the actual title is E.T. the extraterrestrial. It's yeah. not just E.T. Yeah, the entire movie is E.T. the extraterrestrial. I always like it's E.T. like because we always just called it E.T. So um, that's mm-hmm. I'm smart. Fun fact: I was um, deathly afraid of the E.T. ride uh, at Universal Studios when I was five. I don't know why. For some reason, my brain. I thought you had to actually be able to ride a bike in order for it to work. So I oh. thought that I was gonna like fall to my death. So I didn't go on it as a five year old. <laughs> Okay, I love that, though. I've never been, so that's... If I ever go, I'll think of you. <laughs> I was very skittish when it came to, like, thrill rides as a kid. Like, now I'm like, I don't care. But, like, when I was a kid, like, that scared me. Space Mountain scared me. Like, because, like, the, the, the atmosphere of it is a little scary for a little kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I'm just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> I'm waiting until both my kids can, like, fully enjoy it before I put that much money into something mm-hmm. like that. Like both of my children need to get the most of this. Uh, mm-hmm. Before I'm like, let's I, go. There's merit in. Yeah. There's merit in taking kids that are, uh, that are free because they're free. Cause they're, they're young mm-hmm. enough. They're free. Um, but there is once, once you're past that threshold, I think two, I think is the threshold where like, where like the, 
very very small children you don't have to pay for their tickets but once you have to pay for all for all people involved you definitely wait until like the kids can really remember it and enjoy it yeah and can understand the expectations of like we're gonna be outside there's gonna be a lot of walking it's gonna be hot but also please put your children in comfortable shoes yeah i yeah I'm the a- amount of people that like i don't know, say i'm a firm believer on like I need to to be enjoyable for everyone that it involves. Yeah, because like if your kid is miserable, the entire group is miserable, and like people will put their kids in like. Mm-hmm. I mean, Crocs are comfortable to an extent, but like to put them like in Crocs or like Converse because they're cute and they're fashionable, and that's what they have. And them as adults are wearing like nice running shoes that are like have actual support. And like I can't speak for all families because when I go, it's me and my adult brothers and my and my mother. So we're all adults. We're doing whatever we want to do. Mm-hmm. We go about ten miles a day. Like, you can't do that in not good shoes. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, we're not. And that's another thing, too, is, like, I want to be able to go where I'm not dealing with a stroller. I'm not dealing Mm -hmm. with a million snacks throughout the day. I'm not dealing with diaper changes, potty Mm -hmm. trips. Like, I need my kids to be the point. And also, I love rides. I need to Mm -hmm. be able to be like, all right, I want to go on this ride. I don't want this to be who can, who can't, who's going to sit with the kids who can't fit on the ride. Like, I don't I don't want to split up. So, like, we've already made the decision. Once the kids are, like, at a certain age where they can both do plenty, yeah, then we will go and spend, like, and, like, do it right mm-hmm. and have, like, the money to do it and have a lot of fun with it. Because going right now and toting around my three-year-old who is, like, fighting potty training sounds like a literal nightmare because he's also never stops eating. Yeah. I I will say that Disney's very good when it comes to writer swap situations. So like you wouldn't necessarily need to split up like in the event like you had a kid that like like maybe like one kid wants to go and one kid mm-hmm. doesn't. So all of you can wait in the line together and then the one the kid that does not want to go on the ride, um you can, they they can go with one parent and the kid that wants to go on the ride will go on the ride with one parent and then the mm-hmm. other person if they do still want to go on the ride, the cast members will bring them to like uh kind of like the exit kind of so you can kind of swap and like okay you've got kid now and then other parent can just get right on the ride they don't have to wait online again so they gotcha. are good about that kind of rider swap that's great i also but just i know i no. i get it it's, it's better to go when everyone can enjoy themselves and i'm like i mean i went mm-hmm. when i w- we this this was i understand why we went we went the summer um that i got diagnosed with my chronic illness and there, there's just, there's a lot of fun stories that come out of that time because i was like i had fun but i was 11 or i was 10 but I was exhausted because I was just, it had oh, been an bet. exhausting summer. I mean, we, we have some of the funniest stories out of those. One of them, and we can go back to Boss Burgers after this massive theme park tangent. I'm so sorry. But one thing that we'll never forget is I, I wasn't quite good at take at, uh, I wasn't good at all at um, swallowing pills yet, but that's the medication that I was on was, was capsule mm-hmm. form. Um, so the recommendation was that we kind of just take the medication out of the, out of the capsule and put it on like applesauce or something like that, just to get the medication in me we mm-hmm. didn't we were in disney world they don't always have applesauce uh, but what we did what we did have was pucker powder no one thought a heaping tablespoon of basically colored flavored citric acid would be sour i don't know why anyone didn't think this so we're putting the medicine on like basically a heaping tablespoon of pucker powder my face apparently just like imploded like with like the whole of the sourness oh my god i can laugh about it now like back then i was like exhausted and like like embarrassed and i'm like what, what just happened now like it's the funniest thing it's like just, it occurred to no one in all four of us with working minds and you know critical thinking skills that a, a, a product called pucker powder would be sour if you ate it by the tablespoon yeah probably yeah let's just bring applesauce oh no we didn't think about that so this episode, uh, we all, like, us iPhone users know, like, Apple Siri, this is supposed to be satirical of Apple Siri. Um, mm-hmm. The toilet, you know, yeah. doesn't always respond correctly um, and only uses keywords from what Gene is saying. So yeah. that's another little fun fact. Um, after Mr. Fron picks up the uh, Baby Boy Albright flower sack... Um, another one becomes visible, and this one's name is Baby Boy Chun, named for the director of this episode, <laughs> whose name is Anthony Chun. Oh, I love that. Uh, the second flower sack Fran gives Jean is named Baby Boy Rogers. Mm. Uh, the restaurant Bevels is named after the show's dialogue editor, Matt Bevel. And um, so Eugene Merman, this is his favorite episode. So the guy who plays Jean, this is his favorite episode. Okay. And my favorite part of this is you can't see it very well, 
So thank you to whoever put this in the wiki. But this is what the chalkboard says in Mr. Franz's child reading lesson. Because it has a do list and a don't list. Okay. It says do, hug, love, carry, read to, rock to, sleep, and care for. The don't, (laughs) these are flower sack babies, says uh, don't leave the baby in the rain, (laughs) make into cake, wash, (laughs) toss, shake, show them music videos, (laughs) smoke, (laughs) sit on, prank phone calls, resell, (laughs) give to stranger. (laughs) All good advice. Um, kabuki theater <laughs> and take into the hot tub. Oh uh, yeah, also good advice. But this this list, I'm just like, what? You know, you gotta when when dealing with you know 11 year olds, you gotta cover all your bases, all your bases. Um, but those are my fun facts for you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> It was a good time. What did you think of this episode? I liked this. I really liked this one. It was uh, it was a lot of good chaos. Um, I, I, I start, starting from the beginning with the uh, with the suit. Although I, I put in all caps, why is Bob in a suit? But uh, then Linda's line of, uh, he's guilty of handsome in the first degree. I'm like, that's a, that's a good pickup line. Like that that, that was is. solid. I loved her jealousy going on yeah. too when the women came in because she's like, we were all single once, but we don't have to be a slut about it. And I just wrote, what is the point of being single then? I, I also wrote down that line, we were all single once, we don't have to be a slut about it. <laughs> Which is like, I I like, I the, the suit thing, I mean, it's very apropos and it, it's, it's a sad truth of our society is like when you're dressed better, you're dressed like, you know, someone that may have their life together, people do treat you differently and are, oh, yeah. sadly, our, le- our legal system does treat people that look like they've got their life together a lot better which is unfortunate oh yeah but i did i did like the uh the technologically advanced toilet like i, I know it was it's obviously a uh um and a virtual assistant uh parody but it, it reminded me of a simpsons treehouse of horror episode where they have a smart house for some reason um that was voiced by pierce brosnan and the smart house became jealous of everyone and <laughs> became jealous of homer and um tried to kill him which is definitely a parody of something oh yeah. Um, that's what it reminded me of. I mean, you have the movie Smart House. I love Smart House. To be fair, she, she didn't try to kill anybody. She just tried to keep them inside where they would be safe because that's that's how logic works. And then she made a, and then she she made a, you know, the, the hologram of herself so she could be a mother. I'm like, that's not how that works, but I like it. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was a good movie, though. That's one of my favorite decoms, I will say. I mean, it's a $14,000 toilet, though. It is a very expensive toilet. Like, you know, we see a lot of the parodies of, like, the Japanese toilets that, like, are very technologically advanced. But I, I $14,000 is a lot to spend on a toilet. Yeah. And I kept I kept commenting, like, and eh, the toilet's dead. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I loved Bob getting hit on so much because, like, when they're in the restaurant, a couple sends him drinks, another guy sends him drinks. Like, he just keeps getting sent drinks. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I love Bob getting hit on this much. But, like, we love it. Yep. He is our bi mm-hmm. king. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I, I absolutely loved that. It was oh. absolutely wonderful. Um, and mm-hmm. then when they are in the internet cafe and the guy like immediately calls the cops, that is the fastest cop response I have ever seen. Oh yeah. Even if they're down the street, they're not they're not coming in that quickly. No, not that quickly. So I'm like, all right, I see this. I see you. I, I'll give the kids props that um using i wrote down andy or ollie because i don't know i still don't know which one is which um but that using one of the twins uh as a decoy was not a bad idea honestly on on their part to uh to get max flush like yeah to get him to uh to follow them instead of instead of gene like that was actually a good idea even if andy and ollie uh were both trying to carry each other across Mm -hmm. the street yeah they're they're not the brightest but they they were useful they are useful. We'll we'll give them that. They 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 are good bodies when you need a human being. <laughs> we needed a warm body, and there there they were. Exactly. But I did. I thought it was hilarious when she said when Louise said to uh, Tina, "Cancel my appointments," and she went, and Tina went, "That's going to take a while." I'm like, Louise, what appointments do you have? 
What are you doing? I Something's going to take a while, apparently. That's Louise for you. She's like a little mini mob boss. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's the sense that I'm getting out of her. Is there some kind of seedy underbelly happening with her life? I mean, she had Andy and Ollie, like, doing what she needed immediately. Like, all the kids were there, like, when she needed them. Mm-hmm. Yep. She was able to rally the troops. Very quickly. So what did you mm-hmm. rate this? So I gave this one, uh, I gave it an eight for plot and an eight for character because it's it's good chaos. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, when it comes to characters, I mean, like, I, again, I, I don't necessarily like that, you know, people that Bob is wearing a nice suit and therefore he gets treated better. I mean, no, that's a society issue. Um, but so I got eights for eights for plot mm-hmm. and character. Uh, and I gave it a 10 for personal. Uh, cause this was good chaos. Like it really was like, especially like you know, oh. seeing it, the, the toilets, like it's like basically using the toilet as the, uh, as the surrogate for the, the flower baby that, uh, he sadly dropped multiple times. Um, it, this was, this was good chaos. I, you know, I appreciated like the, the ET references, um, especially I, I, I was, when the bridge thing was happening, I'm like, oh, that's the ET reference. And then he just falls immediately. And I'm like, that's gotta hurt. And I, can't imagine the t- the the toilet would have been okay, uh, but uh, yeah. But still, I gave it a ten for personal. So uh, overall, this one got a twenty six. That is amazing. Gene yeah. has really grown on you. He really has, which is a, a a turn of events I was not expecting. I love it. I, I did think... not rate this as high. Oh, sorry. Oh, really. <laughs> No, I was, I was saying, I think with Gene, he's grown on me because in the first few episodes, the, the comedy of him is the repetitively annoying 11-year-old. And I think they've gotten rid of that repetitiveness of his comedy. Not not completely, but like they've not made that his go-to style of comedy. And that's what I found annoying in the beginning. And now he's just fun to watch. Gotcha. I like that, though. But yeah, I didn't I didn't rate this as high. Plot and character I gave seven. Mm-hmm. Um and personal I gave six. It's just it's not one of my favorites. Like it's for okay. me, it's it's another Bob's episode. I mm-hmm. I I like it. It's not bad. It's just yeah. it's not as good as the next one, in my opinion. Fair. All right. So now we're gonna do season three, episode sixteen, Topsy. Louise has to do a science fair project, and she doesn't want to. The new science sub, Mr. Dinkler, destroys her volcano, and she is forced to do a new project. The librarian, Mr. Ambrose, tells the kids to look up Topsy, the elephant that was executed years ago, supposedly, by Thomas Edison. Mr. Dinkler's idol. Louise puts together an extravagant reenactment of Topsy's execution. Jean writes a song that Mr. Fishoder and Gail sing in the background, and Tina plays Topsy the Elephant alongside Jean's Thomas Edison. Bob and Linda compete with their own inventions, Spiceps and the Spice Rack, later secretly ending, entering them into the science fair. The kids' reenactment goes off with a boom with Teddy's assistance. First place went to either Bob or Linda. We will never know. We will not know. So what did you get for the vacant storefront? Um, I got Elliot's Smelly Bits pot- Potpourri Shop. You, you you smelt it, we dealt it. So that's, of course, you, for you smelt it, we dealt it. But I, I thought that one was really funny. Mm-hmm. And then we have the pest control truck. We got Hugs Not Bugs Exterminators. That's for the Hugs Not Drugs anti-drug campaign that did not work. <laughs> nope. Didn't. <laughs> So how many burgers of the day did you get? Uh, I think I only got two. No, uh, there are only two. Okay, good. I when when there's like when there's less than three, I'm usually like concerned like I missed something. It's weird when there's le- like less of them. So I got the I know why the Cajun burger sings, <laughs> which is the reference to Maya Angelou's uh, I know why the caged bird sings. I can imagine that's a burger with some kind of Cajun spice mix, which I'm sure is delicious. Oh, I'm sure. And I got a uh, Tarragon in 60 Seconds burger. <laughs> and that's for the Gone in 60 Seconds movie. Yeah. Which, honestly, I don't I don't know if I could ever qualify what Tarragon tastes like. I can't either, in all honesty. Like, I hear people use it a lot. And I'm like, I, my brain thinks it's somewhere between rosemary and thyme. But I'm like, 
Do I really know what that tastes like? Not really. Do I, I barely know what rosemary tastes like unless I'm tasting it. I know what thyme tastes like, but for me, I use uh, garlic and thyme when I make steaks. Mm-hmm. And yeah. my husband loves steak. So when I do make it, I like to get fresh thyme. Rosemary, mm-hmm. not so much. Yeah. Um, but tarragon, I don't even think, I don't even know if I have tarragon in my kitchen. Yeah, I don't think I do either. Rosemary, I will say, I had a bourbon based cocktail at a distillery uh around here somewhere either last summer or the summer before um and it, it had rosemary in it it was delicious but like i couldn't tell you what the rosemary tasted like in it it, just, it gave it an herbiness that was really good okay was it like an old-fashioned i think so let me see if the because i could see rosemary and bitters like matching fairly well especially since usually in an old-fashioned you use citrus yeah um I think the... Here's my bartending experience coming in. <laughs> Let me see if the distillery still has their menu up. Or if they even still have the same drinks. Oh, we can only we can only hope. We actually went to... Um, so we went to the Costco liquor store <laughs> mm-hmm. over the weekend. And uh, the guy that runs it, he's pretty cool because it's a lot of local. Because we actually have some breweries and mm-hmm. distilleries like local to us. Which is... like We're not a huge town. So... Not my like main town I live in where Costco is because of course I don't live mm-hmm. that close to Costco, and he actually owns a restaurant as well that does um, alcohol infused mm-hmm. desserts. So we we will be um, hopefully going there next month for nice. my birthday and experiencing that. So I'm very excited because desserts that are alcohol yeah. like yes please. So the drink that I had, um, it's it's just just the initials of the distillery. Uh, which is OCD. It's just the, it's just the name of the the distillery is Orange County Distilleries. Um, it's ah. not quite an old fashioned. There aren't bitters in it. Um, but it's made with uh with their um in house made bourbon, dark maple syrup, but then a lemon rosemary simple syrup. So it's it's not an old fashioned, but it's similar. It's very similar. They do have an old fashioned on the menu, which I'm sure yeah. is made with the same bourbon. Um, but it's it's a sim it's bourbon with some more sugar in it. Okay, I was going to say, it sounds like an old-fashioned just without the bitters. Yeah. But the bitters are important, so that's yeah. why it's not classified as one, I guess. Yeah. It was good either way. All right, so we had two more guest stars. hmm I say guest stars. One we will continue to see, but uh, did you pick up on who these individuals were? Like, who plays uh, Mr. Ambrose? I did not pick up on them this time. So, Mr. Ambrose is Billy Eichner. Okay uh he's mostly known i think from parks and rec and this is considered his first episode because he comes back Mm -hmm. and then uh mr dinkler is oh i hope i I say this correctly mark pros prox prox p-r-o-k-s-c-h i have no idea how to say his last name nor do i know who that is i don't either uh he played nate in the office okay so those are our, I say guest stars, but Ambrose continues in the show. Um, mm. And funnily enough, this is Dan Mintz's favorite episode, the person who voices Tina. Huh. So we just had Eugene, who plays Gene, his favorite episode, and now we have Tina slash Dan. So this is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Lauren Bouchard's first writing credit to the show since writing uh, Burger Wars. Gotcha. So the creator wrote Topsy. Uh, did you notice that Mr. Dinkler's mug says invent much? No, I did not. <laughs> um, so huh, I'm going to leave the funny things first because I do want to talk about Topsy for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, Topsy was, did, was, did happen. Okay. Topsy was an elephant from the like late 1800s that was captured as a baby in a, a somewhere in Southern Asia mm-hmm. and brought over to the United States because in that time we had like Barnum and the circus craze and all of that going on. Yep. Uh, we did we we didn't have the same guidelines and like rules and laws around how we treated animals in that time period. No, we didn't. So um Top Topsy was not she mm-hmm. was not brought up in the best of circumstances. No. And so she did. In fact, like there was at once there was at one point uh, a guy, I guess one of not, I, w- I don't want to say it was the owner, it was like I guess one of her handlers literally like rode on her drunk through the town. Like through the city. I think up in New York actually. Okay. Um because they executed her 
at Coney Island. Lovely. And so, um, while Edison was not said to be present during the public execution, Mm -hmm. his company's DC current equipment and electricians from an Edison company involved, uh, were involved in setting up the aspects of the execution. So they actually used, he wasn't there, but they used his stuff and his electricians helped do it. He, he was involved. He was involved. They did that in front of like 1,800 people, I want to say 16 or 1,800 people. Jeez. Came and attended in Coney Island, Topsy's execution. Lovely. Um, and But the irony, though, of in this episode, they show all of like the reenactment mm-hmm. in front of a Tesla coil, which is interesting because that's the whole discussion between like the scientists and there's a whole thing with like Edison and Tesla and it's... I never thought mm-hmm. I'd be discussing science on here <laughs> to this extent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this yes. podcast, it just it continues to uh to exceed our, our greatest expectations. Exactly. So we've gone from R.I.P. Francis now to R.I.P. Topsy. It's just really sad because Topsy really mm-hmm. did exist. So Yeah. Now we have R.I.P. Topsy. Because they were like, oh, well, she's killed yeah. some people. Okay, she was abused, so and she's an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a lot, but it's in memoriam of Topsy. So, would you like to hear all the other mm-hmm. projects that were on display in the science fair now that I'm <laughs> told you about yes. the elephant? Yes, please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, please. I just it's no, it's okay. No, it's like when you asked me before, like what I know about like Tesla and Edison, and I'm like not a lot because yeah. if I remember correctly, like the time in elementary school, like I said, when we did like inventor projects or something like that. Um, I think is when I, I did a project on the Wright brothers. So like I, I chose airplanes. That's fair for me. It's the, the history nerd in me. There was like this actual whole thing of like the war, war of currents because before like our electricity was so common, mm-hmm. they had this whole thing between what worked better DC or AC current mm-hmm. DC is for short AC can go further. And Edison tried to say for a very long time, because all of his patents were on DC current, that his were better. Mm -hmm. And so later on, he did finally admit that Tesla was right. Uh But like for both of their lives, they were just constantly butting heads with each other. Um, I will say Tesla was not a good person, but he did want electricity to be free. Like clean energy to be free. So... Yeah, it's it's a whole history thing that I will stop now because not everybody likes history as much as I do. We all have our things that we go on tangents about. It's fine. Mine's just scientists and history and elephants. Um, okay, so <laughs> the projects that were on display because it's not Bob's Burgers without puns or funny jokes. Oh, it's yeah. quite a list, mm-hmm. so I'm just going to go through them. Okay, sounds good. We start off with uh, Plum- <laughs> Pluto. You almost had it all. Oh, poor Pluto. Erosion. Dust in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Magnets and why we love them. Magnets are cool. Yeah. Human urine, number one fertilizer. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. This one's funny. What is the boiling point of beef stew? What is the boiling what is the <laughs> boiling point of beef stew? I don't know. Um what is the boiling point of beef stew? Would it not just be 212 degrees? I mean, I would assume so, but like I don't I don't I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out one day. I suppose. Why do peanuts make my face swell up? Now that is a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> Ants, nature's hard workers. <laughs> yeah. What what makes ducks tick? N- n- now, that's something I actually would like to look into further. What does make ducks tick? This one is, I like this, I like the next one. Black holes, should we be worried? <laughs> yes. Yes, we should. <laughs> How carbohydrates make my dad fat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, global warming. Is it hot in here or is it just Earth? <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, this is me. I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna be like, you know, is it hot in here or is it just me? But now, yeah, is it hot in here? Or is it just Earth? It's, it's just Earth. This one is the complete thing. DNA is just and backwards. <laughs> this one was most likely Jeremy's. Here's my idea: the light bulb. <laughs> 
And the last one that I don't it is what metal is most affected by water? Is most what metal is most what affected by water? Wow. <laughs> In what way? I don't know. That's all it says. I don't know. I don't know. I, but yeah. And that is the conclusion of all of the science fair projects at Wagstaff. You know what? That that sounds like a great that sounds like a great mixture for, you know, like a fourth grade science fair. So It does. These kids are creative. Yeah. So what did you think of Topsy? There are parts that I really liked and parts that I really didn't read it really didn't. So that this one is uh it's a it's a weird score, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, but we'll we'll get to that later. Um because Miss Mr. Uh what's his name? Dinkle Dinkler. What's his name? Mr. Dinkler. Mr. Dinkler. Like I he he's the absolute worst kind of substitute teacher who's like gunning for the actual job and I'm like, No, you no. shouldn't be doing any of this. Like please. You A, like you let the kids make volcanoes. They're simple and the kids learn something. Like I know you you wanna try and like have the kids learn as much as possible, but like you are the substitute for this class. You cannot force a kid to do whatever mm-hmm. subject you want because it's not your decision to make. So that, I think the former team- I'm pretty sure destroying stuff too. Mm. Yeah. I have to- Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Destroying stuff is definitely not allowed by teachers. Yeah. You said you as a former teacher though. Oh yeah. So as a form, I think, I think as a former teacher and as someone with a library science degree, even though I work in tech, but as a, with, with a library science degree- the a- the actions of the teacher and the librarian in this episode really I I did not like. I kind of liked the librarian trying to be like, "Hey, look at this weird thing," um, but I'm also interested in these kinds of things, so that's a like a biased opinion, I think. But yeah, um, I really don't like Dinkler. No, I liked the tactic of like here's like of of him tell of of Ambrose telling the kids to go look up something else about Edison, not just Edison, but it was like the thing it was i mean i i know this is all parody but it was like the use the internet because books are dumb kind of thing and i'm like you are a librarian Mm -hmm. um like it's i'm all for steering kids in in like you know in a way that you know makes sense for their research but like i don't know but the 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 librarian and me i'm like i can't nope you will continue to not like him then (laughs) yeah Probably. I, I like Billy Eichner, like... Because he comes back. I like Billy Eichner, so there's that. I mean, like, I, I, I feel like his his thing of yelling at the person on the phone and saying, like, they're, they're going to give them a discount on the grass and all this stuff, and you're, you're going to apologize to my new friend Donna! Like, that that's lives rent-free in my head. Oh, yeah, of course. But, um... He, he's, he's, he's an interesting character. Yeah. But yeah, so I... That did get in the way of my complete enjoyment of the episode. Um, I did love the musical number with, mm-hmm. uh, with Fish Odor and Gail. <laughs> As they end up making out behind <laughs> the curtain. I mean, that that's about right. With those two characters, it's about right. Oh, yeah. But I, I did have some thoughts on um, on Spice Eps and the Spice Rack. Yes, please. Because I, I, I put down multiple times. Like, they're not out there ideas to have spices on you, especially if you're moving around the kitchen a lot. But more so than the armbands and the sports bra... Would a tool belt not make more sense? I mean, I know I'm sure it might be harder to make a pun, but like, like practically, would a tool belt situation, or even just kind of like, like, you know, like a whatever the thing is that like people look with like for like machine gun bullets, sash? like one of those kinds, of, a sash. I'm sure there's a word for it. Um, would that not be a little more practical? Yeah, I feel like with the biceps, like you can't see anything that's on the back. Like how how are you yeah. seeing any of that? And then with the spice rack, are the labels on top? Because if the labels aren't on top, my boobs are too big to see what's on the outside. Exactly. Like, I feel like also just like, I mean, there's the sanitary thing of it. I'm like, the the spice ups are basically spice bottle arm floaties. And it's just not really working for anybody. Because even when Bob's like showing them off, he's struggling to get to some of them. So I, 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 exactly. So like. I, I think having spices readily available, great idea. But like, maybe we just use a tool belt. I mean, I I can see, yeah, I can see that. For me, I'm just like, where do I need to have spices on my body? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, as a home cook, I have an entire 
I have an entire rack of spices and then like a good bottom portion of one of my cabinets next to my stove is chock full of spices. I actually got like these mm-hmm. rotating organizers so I could fit more spices inside of it and make them more like readily available oh, because nice. I like I make my own curry and we have a, like we we are always mm-hmm. making burgers so you need spices to change up those flavors. I cook from scratch so like I have so many spices. Yep. So my brain is like mm-hmm. I have too many spices to have to fit on my body. No, exactly. Like I, we have like like the tier shelf things to kind of help see where everything is a little easier. Um, like I'm like I'll admit, like when I'm cooking, if I'm not using like a HelloFresh thing that just has like you know just the pre-made spice mixes ready for me to go. Also, hi HelloFresh, do you want to sponsor us? We've been asked you now three times, so please, <laughs> <laughs> not sponsored, but if they asked, um, please. You know, it, it makes, if I'm not using that, I'm like, I'm using like, just, our, it, I'm using any other recipe. Like I have to go into our spice cabinet. Like I can get to the salt, pepper, oregano very quickly. Close it right in the front. Anything past row two, it's still hard to get to, even though I know it's back there, but I still gotta like reach back and make sure I don't knock the whole thing over getting everything out. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's annoying. Yeah. That's why I did. They're just little, um, lazy Susans that I have. There's two of them that fit into my cabinet and I just stuffed them full of mm-hmm. different spices. So I just have to turn them. Um, only for me to mm-hmm. still have too many spices to fit in both of those. So <laughs> I just keep buying mm-hmm. spices. We're now to the point where like, we're going to have to reorganize cause it's spices. And then like, like all our containers for leftovers, I have to completely mm-hmm. reorganize yeah. that cause I'm running out of space. I keep buying more spices. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. I like to season my food. You mean you can never really have enough spices, quite frankly. I think people that look like us could use more spices. I, I have to agree with you. I, I pride myself on having cooking with as much flavor as I do. <laughs> we colonize the world for spices. Why don't we use them? Exactly. <laughs> Colonizing is bad. Let me also put that in there. Colonizing is bad. It is bad. We don't colon we don't we don't colonize now. I'm saying our an- well, not necessarily well, my ancestors, but ancestors yeah. of people that look like us in general raided the world for spices and now we don't cook with it. But I I do appreciate you uh listening to me today about my I know what's wrong with us. history of Edison and Tesla cuz that's actually like one of those points of history that I've had too much interest in. It's all in context with the episode. So it's fine. It's on topic. I mean, at one point, they were trying to prove between each other DC and AC current, and Tesla powered, like, an entire, I think, event mm-hmm. uh, by producing power from Niagara Falls hmm. with clean energy. And I'm just like, that's so cool. But that also, he's actually, like, historically not mm-hmm. good on some beliefs. So at the same time, I'm just like, <laughs> history is fun. <laughs> Learning is fun. I will say I did appreciate uh, Tina's committing to the bit of um, at the end to the point where they thought that she, they, they had electrocuted her. They, she scared the shit out of everybody. Like uh, that, that was commitment. That was commitment. That was commitment. I commitment. appreciated that. And like their lip syncing was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I, it was good lip syncing. So what did you rate this? So this one has a weird score. Um, it's got the same score as the last episode, just with different numbers. <laughs> so it's still a 26, but um, it gets a 10 for plot and a 10 for character because it's, a, it's I, I liked so much of the episode, but the stuff that bothered me really bothered me. So despite it's two 10s, it gets a six for personal. <laughs> the teacher and the librarian really got me. They really got to you, huh? No, you're okay. Like the, the teacher and the librarian really got I, I couldn't it's just it, it got it was too much i i refuse to get like i've been a little messing with the with the score i can't give it more than a sex for personal for them specifically which is weird because i thought you would end up liking the librarian at least a little bit and i was like oh i was wrong i assumed wrong maybe he'll grow on me but there were some tactics of his and i'm like this is not really a librarianship at its best but that, that, could, just be, that could just be because I, I recently went through the master's degree I will say, like, is Billy Eichner the same character in everything? Probably. Much like Jenny Slate, I think he does pretty much play the same character in everything. Because he's kind of similar in the movie Noel. Mm-hmm. If you ever watch that, he's like Santa's cousin. Oh, he he's kind of similar in character in his character on the movie Noel. Mm-hmm. If you've ever seen it? I have he's not. He's pretty much Santa's cousin. Okay. Um... It's 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 a Christmas movie, so it's the perfect time uh, while we're recording this <laughs> to watch it. Not when this is coming out. Yeah. Uh, so I gave this a twenty six. I gave it a ten for plot because the okay. history nerd in me 
mm-hmm. loved this. Um, it's one of my. It's, yeah. it's a pretty. It's it's not highly ranked as on this, but like I do enjoy this one. This is not one I would ever skip. Mm-hmm. Uh, character and personal, yeah. I both gave eight. I hate Dinkler. Okay. I really hate Mr. Dinkler. Thank you. So character that one just nope. I cannot stand that character. Mm-hmm. I'm like y'all really wrote a really annoying character really well. Yeah, yeah, they 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 got that down. I'll give them that. So I gave it a 26. Okay, because that was an episode. That th- that was an episode. There was I I didn't necessarily know where it was going, but you know we got there. <laughs> we did. We got there. Um, and I I stick to like I know I talked a lot about Topsy, but I loved that the end credits mm-hmm. they kind of show Topsy. Yeah. Um, happy again, and like and then like the kids are kind of like cherubs, so like almost like angels around her so i was like it it really was just like this interesting like in memoriam to topsy the elephant Mm -hmm. yeah so it it was interesting so now we have r.i.p francis and r.i.p topsy can we please stop killing animals on this show (laughs) that'd be nice thank you all for listening join us next time for our once upon a time season one finale special as we chat about the final two episodes of season one episodes 121 and apple red is blood and 122, The Land Without Magic. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at O-B-D-Y-K underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Katie and Lauren and edited by Katie.